Hey guys, welcome to Reality Check. How much resolution do we need when gaming? Now as we're entering the next console generation, we're also seeing the beginnings of a new resolution revolution. 1080p HD is increasingly being seen as all tech, and new UHD 4K is being touted by many as the future. But do we really need it? And is there such a thing as too much resolution? When it comes to producing a beautifully sharp image, it's all about creating a display on which our human eyes can no longer detect or resolve individual pixels, essentially creating a lifelike image. Now, a normal human eye is considered to have standard 2020 vision. So what does this mean? Well, imagine a circle, it's made up of 360 degrees. So each one of those 360 degrees can in turn be divided up into 60 arc minutes. Now, when we say a person has 20-20 vision, what we mean is that at 20 feet away, a human eye is able to separate lines that are one arc minute apart. So, if you're a manufacturer and you want to create a display on which the average human eye can no longer resolve individual pixels, it's not just as simple as making it 4K or 8K or whatever. You have to consider three things. First up, the size of the thing. Then, the physical distance from your eye to the display. And thirdly, the density of the pixels. Because ultimately, if you get far enough away from any screen, even one at standard definition, the image will eventually appear perfect. Take this 32-inch 4K monitor. From its dimensions and resolution, we can calculate its pixel density at 137 pixels per inch, or PPI. This 23-inch Samsung TV, on the other hand, outputting at 720p, has a PPI of 64, so much less. However, if you stand, say, seven foot away from both of those displays and look at them, while there's obviously differences in terms of size and contrast and other factors, you can't resolve the pixels on either, so technically, they look equally sharp. This is because every display has a specific distance where the viewer needs to be in order to get the most out of it. And as a result of the raw sensitivity of the human eye, every display also has a distance where the benefit of those extra pixels disappears. In fact, you can work out the optimum and minimum distance to be from any display, assuming 2020 vision, using this great chart produced by Carlton Bale. I strongly urge you to go and read his article, Does 4K Resolution Matter? It's fascinating, if slightly brain hurting. Basically, from this chart, though, we can see that in order to get the full benefit of that 32-inch 4K monitor, we need to be no more than two, maybe two and a half feet away any further and we start to get some pixel redundancy. In fact, as the chart indicates, 4K really only comes into its own as displays get much bigger. Either that, or as is the case with our monitor, you need to be really bloody close to the thing to get the full effect. And that distance is one reason why I think this technology lends itself much more to gaming, especially PC gaming, than sitting at home TV viewing, because you tend to be much closer, especially if you're using a mouse and keyboard. Not only that though, a welcome side effect of 4K is that it pretty much removes the issue of aliasing. Also known as jaggies, aliasing manifests itself as a nasty distracting noir or strobing effect. This is generally dealt with by process heavy anti-aliasing techniques which smooth out jagged lines by surrounding them with transparent pixels. The downside of this though is that it does reduce contrast. However, with 4K, because the pixel density is so high, this problem pretty much disappears. So let me know what you think. Are you excited about 4K? Does your at home seat to display distance mean you'll never notice these improvements? Or perhaps you'd like to see more time and effort put into things like improving contrast and frame rate to really create the graphics of our gaming future. Let me know in the comments down below or by tweeting at me at camfrasrob. Oh, and if you want more 4K, make sure you read Mark's excellent feature on why he thinks it is indeed the future of gaming. All right guys, thanks for watching. See you next week.